This video is on environmental science and looking at the Dust Bowl from the 1930s in the US. And this event, this topic, is a fantastic mixture of both soil and earth science, farming practices, population change and migration and movement of people, and the effect of over cultivating a land with a change in the climate. So let's check this out. This is the Earth Science Classroom. The Dust Bowl was centered around the Great Plains and certain states. But the Great Plains is a geographical area in the United States that is west of the 97th meridian, which is a line of longitude. And it goes or extends up to the Rocky Mountains. And it goes from the Mexican border to the Canadian border and into the Canadian prairies. Now, this is a large area of land that was purchased through the Louisiana Purchase of 1803 and it includes about 1.1 million square miles of land which is about a third of the United States of America which is a very large country and the states include Montana, the Dakotas, Minnesota, Kansas, Oklahoma, Texas, New Mexico, Nebraska, Colorado, Wyoming and these central states were pivotal in this Dust Bowl and how it actually occurred. So the Dust Bowl was firstly a disaster for the environment. It was drought initiated and overpopulated in terms of the farming practices and how the soil was used or misused. However, the historical component of this event is fascinating because it is in the 1930s so you had this period of time this 10 years of extended drought so the climate changed but prior to 1930 the climate was different and the farmers had less issues of growing crops in the great plains there's higher amounts of precip with the climate and then also you had the world war one that was going on in europe prior to 1930 and that caused the European crops and agriculture and farming to decrease severely looking to America to make up the difference and send more food to Europe during the war and post the war so America obliged and started to produce more food and where this was done in the Great Plains now people came to the Great Plains originally in the early to mid 1800s due to Lincoln's new Homestead Act of 1862. Now this enabled the average person older than 21, that's from a different state, usually East Coast states, to move west and start a home, build a home and have 160 acres of state or public land given to them for a dollar and they would use that land to farm and cultivate and produce crops and also have animals. So this was a benefit to both the individual person on that homestead act and also the country to produce more food and allow the country to grow. Now this growth was uncontrolled. So over the course of 123 years you and across 30 states you had about 4 million people migrate and move into the Great Plains and the Midwest states. And you have the combination of how farming or the point of where farming was in terms of its progression and how it went from the second revolution of using more machines and using horses and increasing the yield and different kinds of crop rotation and how to grow crops and seeds and uh, selecting seeds that grow each year in terms of certain crops like wheat and corn and maize and alfalfa and then the progression into the third agricultural revolution which was towards the 1940s where you're using more machinery and you're just upscaling the farming practices and irrigation methods changed the crops changed in terms of monoculture and single cash crops and the use of a single acre and getting more food out of that single acre of farmland. So it's a fantastic mixture of both the human element, the historical element with wars, and then also in the drought and the climate shifts and the farmers still wanting to maintain the yield and the crops during the 1930s when the climate changed and the precip decreased. So they turned to what's called dry farming or dry land farming has been around in the arid and semi-arid states and countries for a long time and the, the ability to access deeper down moisture 
that was trapped from or stored in the soil layers and the horizons from previous rain events or rainy seasons. And when a dry season came, they would tap into that deeper moisture to irrigate their plants rather than use extra irrigation from outside sources, perhaps rivers or irrigation pipes that weren't always available because of supply based on the climate and based on the amount of use or farmers that are using the same water. And the Ogallala Aquifer, which is basically under most of the Great Plains, was really started to be used for irrigation after the 1930s. So there was a turn to, okay, where's the water going to come from to irrigate all these crops when the drought came? And the effect of the drought and the continued cultivation of the land with the machines and also the Campbell method of dry land farming created a situation of soil erosion and soil derogation, which is the breakdown of the quality of soil and the, the soil to bind together. It becomes drier, it becomes more separated and segregated, and the pieces of soil, the topsoil, become more like dust. And then once that happens, any wind that comes across the landscape is going to pick up that dry, loose pieces of soil and transport it as dust through the wind and it creates these in large amounts of soil can create these very large dust storms called haboobs. Now these are driven by winds from the extra tropical cyclones or mid latitude cyclones that would develop around the Colorado Rockies and travel east across the Great Plains between the two Hadley cell and Feral cell and that would create this constant stream of wind, strong wind in t at times, creating these large dust storms that would travel across the landscape and pick up all the soil and also deposit the soil on different areas and farmlands and houses and people. And it was a serious environmental issue. So you can also add in the economic part of this story, which is the Great Depression. Great Depression started in 1929 and lasted to about 1939. Now this was also concurrently happening with the dust storms in the Great Plains and the Dust Bowl. And the fact that the farmers were stressed on financial issues as well and having to grow crops to sell to make money because the economy was failing or severely depressed. And the farmers were feeling the pressure from that and the pressure for making food to, to sell, which then again culminated in the pressure on the soil and the consistent farming, even though the drought was extending through in the 1930s. So the Great Depression kind of put an extra element of pressure on this area to produce food, regardless of the climatic conditions or irrigation levels and also the climate, the wind patterns. So the coined phrase, the Dust Bowl, by a journalist in the late 1930s stuck. And this referred to areas of northern Texas, eastern New Mexico, southeastern Colorado, western Kansas, and Oklahoma Panhandle and the central state of Oklahoma. And this was between 1935 and 1934. And this is a series of droughts and series of wind dust storms, some large, some small, but the culmination is the Dust Bowl. And certain areas were hit worse than others, and you just had the constant wind erosion, constant soil erosion, and the constant deposition or depositing of millions and millions and millions of tons of dust on different areas of the country, as far east as the East Coast, or even the Atlantic Ocean. And this ability this severe threat and issue of your f house, your farm, possessions, everything being covered by dust, and it caused mass migration out of these areas to different states that were not affected by the dust storm, like California or back east. And these, and these people were termed Okies, as reference to where they came from, which is 
Oklahoma, but there's also other people from other states, but it was all termed Okies. Now, the human element is not the focus in this channel, but it's definitely fun to and interesting to, to look into. But the soil erosion, the farming practices, the irrigation, the drought, the climate and the wind patterns and the dust storms and the duration that happened coupled with the farming practices and the second into third agricultural revolution is fascinating. And this was one of the greatest environmental disasters in American history. Thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like it, please subscribe and hit the like button. If you like more on this content, please check out my channel, which has all these videos on earth science.